Welcome, everybody, to Magical Moves, a show about real estate and moving to Orlando. Uh, I'm your host, Jason Diffendahl. Here with me is my co-host, Eric Gross of MagicalMoves.com. Thanks for having me. Sure, absolutely. Um, th- we've talked in the past about uh, moving here in some of the areas around Walt Disney World, Horizon West, and Windermere. Uh, we're going to take this episode, and we're going to talk about something that uh, some of our viewers emailed and asked about, and that is condos. So most of what we talked about, because most of what's in available in Horizon West and Windermere are single-family houses or townhouses, uh, but but some people that move to Orlando don't want all the maintenance and work associated with a single-family house. They just want to they just kind of want a little space, you know, empty nesters or whatever. They're looking for a little space to enjoy the city uh, or whatever and, and don't want a lot of work. So so condos sort of seem the way to go. So this episode's going to be uh, all about condos. Yeah. I'd say, like, the <laughs> ideal buyer of someone who is looking to purchase a condo here is probably someone who's using it as a vacation home or an investment property. A lot of times our full-time residents here are going to opt for a single-family home. Okay. But if you're not here full-time, a lot of people do go the uh, townhome condo Yeah, route. and then they rent it out. Right. So rent, rent, renting out uh, is, is something we should talk about, too, and, and maybe we'll touch on it in this episode. But I want to get I want to get into um, why you'd want a, t- a condo, it, and whether you're here half the year or the whole year or whatever. Um, you know, obviously, a single-family house has yard and roof and all that maintenance. And so it, if you buy a condo, you can avoid most of that. Right, yeah. It's it's really easy to live in a condo. All you have to do is pay your monthly assessment, but your exterior maintenance is 100% covered. So that includes landscaping, painting every once in a while. The um, roof is re-roofed every, I think, 7 to 10 years, depending on um, the association. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Obviously, that comes with a cost, and that's your monthly assessment, which, I, I, you know, how much do they run? Like, If I had to just, you know, put a ballpark estimate out there, I'd say on the lower end, 400, higher end, 600. Okay. Up, yeah. I've seen some downtown, you know, the, the really high um, high rises. Yeah. Those are like 1,000 a month downtown. Okay. But that's comparable in almost every city. Yeah. So talking about, let's, let's zoom in on downtown, because I actually... Uh, I actually went and visited uh, someone at a condo because I was buying something off of Facebook Marketplace <laughs> uh, over the weekend. And uh, we were, where were we? We were right on Lake Eola. Uh, so that was 408. Here's 408. Yeah, right at I-O4, uh, I-4 and 408. Yeah. So there's Lake Eola. Um, and the the condo building that I was at is... Right here. Oh, right there. So the Stubborn Mule. Stubborn mm, Mule is a mm-hmm. is a fairly well known restaurant in the Lake Eola section, um, and I didn't realize that that's where I was going until I got the person's address. But uh, that's a condo building above Stubborn Mule, um, and that's the building I was in. Um, so that's one of the sort of it's called the Sanctuary. That mm-hmm. seems to be one of the. It, yeah, that's a nice one too. It seemed pretty pricey, so yep. I guess that may be one of the ones that's closer to a thousand a month. Yeah, that's a higher end one. Um, but that was really nice. I mean, they were they when I was there, they were working on like repainting the lobby and stuff. So even though it looked pretty nice, they were still redoing it. It wasn't nice uh, enough, yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> yep. Uh you have some discriminating tastes, I guess. Uh but you know, there's like so like there's there was an issue with where was I going to park because there's limited on-street parking. So I think I I think that condo had a parking in indoor parking garage for residents right um but there really wasn't much for visitors or Guest anything is, like that is on street or parallel parking yes yep. yep uh so i mean that's that's so one example of a condo that uh that is in in the downtown orlando um I, there are some condos like in in Kissimmee too, right? Yep, that's what, exactly where I was going to go with this combo too. Is so let's go down yeah, to Kissimmee. Yeah, if you Kissimmee. go on on um, down one ninety two and Old Lake Wilson Road, there's a ton of condos in that area, and those are going to be a little bit lower. You'll probably find those for around four hundred a month maintenance okay. fees. Yep. 
And so that is, is that going to be east of the Magic Kingdom or west or both? Uh, you'll find it both, yeah. All 192 oh, okay. up until like downtown Kissimmee is, is full of condos. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so that's kind of, we got that all in, all in this area. Um, so this is, I mean, I... I, I kind of look. I kind of look at at 192. There's there's World Drive, and that's kind of my dividing point. You're either west mm-hmm. of World Drive or you're east of World Drive. Um, uh, so this is this is the eastern half that goes over uh, down down here is um, uh, Medieval Times. That's kind of another landmark. <laughs> um, at, at at that point, you're getting pretty close to like the downtown of Kissimmee, which is over here. Right, kind of the not as touristy section of yeah, Kissimmee. Yeah, absolutely. Say. Yeah, no, it's super touristy all the way until kind of you get to the airport. And don't uh, get me wrong, it's still touristy in that area, but just not as touristy. Not, right. right. There's there's it's it's there's there's a relative. It's all relative, right? Yeah. You talk about touristy. Uh, you know, I think most places in Florida are probably more touristy than like any given town in any other state. And I was gonna say my like perspective is completely skewed on that because I grew up right next to this medieval time. So I'm like, oh, it's not as touristy right there. But I'm like, I'm passing medieval times every day, right? Going to Walmart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just like uh, you know, I pass the Magic Kingdom every day yeah. when I drive to here yeah. uh, into the studio. But yeah, so there's condos all along 192. Uh, on this eastern side, there's some on the western side. Um, there's one. There's one that also that I drive past, and we can maybe zoom in on that uh, on Sherberth Road, which is super close to the to the Disney property. And in fact, it kind of borders Disney property. But this magical, magical, magic village, I think, is sort of a collection of condos. They call it like a vacation mm-hmm. uh, resort, but it's condos that people own and then rent out. Uh, Silver Lake is another one that's right there off of Sherber. So these are um, these are both super convenient locations because you're you're literally right across the street from Animal Kingdom at that point. You're right across Osceola Parkway from Animal Kingdom. Um, I'd say that's kind of the trend too. Is what I've seen is developers will instead of owning the entire building and renting it out as um, an investment or vacation rental for um, tourists. A lot of times what I've seen over the past 10 years is that those developers will sell the units as a condo and you own it and then you rent it out. Right. But you have to use their, their management company on yes. the site. Right. And I mean, that's kind of the, that was kind of the method that Margaritaville used, even though yep. they there's mixed houses and, and condos, but that was the whole, all of Margaritaville's like that, yep. where you can buy your unit or your house, but then uh, you're expected to rent it out and you have to go through their company to do that. I don't even think you can use the Margaritaville name when you market it if you don't use their management company. Probably. Yep. Yeah. I'm sure there's it's, all kinds yeah, of restrictions. Their brand is really tight. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and Margaritaville, that, while we while we're talking about it, Margaritaville is kind of across the street from right Sherberth Road. Yeah. So so this this Lake Wilson, everything in in the basically everything on the screen right now is Margaritaville. Yep. Um, between Lake Wilson and uh, 429, uh, and then it's all south of 192. That whole section is Margaritaville, Orlando, and they're still building. I mean, you could this is a Google yeah, Maps from like maybe a couple of years ago or whatever, but you can see there's still sections they're building. Yeah, they're building the condos closest to the 429. 429. Side, but the single family homes are more on that east side where it says the Tipsy Islander. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, I wouldn't call Margaritaville condos. They're more like vacation right. investment va- homes. Right. But it, it's kind of the same thing, they're, right? Yeah, the ones on the left that looks like it's still being developed, those are going to be condos. They're going to be condos. Mm-hmm. Um, but but in either in either case, you've got the same sort of concept where you own a unit, um, but you're not res- you're not taking care of it. You're not responsible for the maintenance, whether it's a condo or a town or, or a house in Margaritaville or whatever. You're you know they're they're handling all that stuff. There are condo associations too that aren't so rental investment oriented too. Like there's some that people actually more live. residential. Yeah, mo- right? much more residential that are that people live in. Are they targeted towards like older people, empty nesters kind of thing? Or or do you think um, I mean that's a logical move for people that don't want to take care of a yard. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's kind of what I was thinking too, is it makes sense when when you just want to enjoy life and not have to deal with with uh, maintenance of your right. house. Um, 
but uh, so in terms of in terms of owning a condo, uh, like a couple of years ago, there was that condo collapse in 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 Miami in Sunrise, yeah, Sunrise, just north of Miami, um, and I think that brought a lot of attention to the concept of owning a condo in a building that you kind of don't control. I mean, if you're in a house in a development with an HOA, you've got some control over your house. Yeah. Right? Even though there's rules and regulations. Designing and landscape and additions and sheds are right. pretty much the extent of an HOA. Right. And maybe fences. But when you're in a condo and and there's an association that manages the building, um, if they don't do a good job, you're kind of stuck. You're at their mercy. Yep. Um, and uh, short of you know you getting a spot on the association board, um, they make the decisions. They decide whether it's time to put a new roof on or or wait. Uh, and the you know the the condo association that ran the one in Sunrise or Surfside. Had- Surfside, yeah. Surfside uh, had, had deferred a lot of maintenance. There were a lot of things that, that I mean, that was also a 50-year-old building, which yeah. you're not really going to find in Orlando. But the concept is the same, where you've got a company that's got control over what is essentially your property. Right. So they own the building. You own within the walls. So when you're getting insurance for your condo, you're really insuring everything from the drywall in. So your personal property, your sink, your flooring, everything there, everything outside or beyond the drywall is owned by the condo association. Okay. And does that include like balconies and stuff too? Like who's responsible for for that? I'm not sure. I'll have oh. to get back to you on that. I mean, it's, uh, I'm just a question right. that popped into my mind. Because, right. you know, like balc- balcony railings it's get probably, rusty yeah, or it's, something. It's probably yours up into the, rail- okay. up into the railing, but okay. they'll replace that. You won't have to replace your own railing. Okay, because that's sort of exterior yep. maintenance in, in, that, in that regard. Um, is... Uh, Condos are still kind of expensive, though, right? Like, obviously, you're going to pay less than a single-family house. Right. But you're also getting a lot less space. You're getting less space. Um, It's good for buyers that maybe don't want a lot of maintenance or they don't want a higher-priced home. But you also have to factor in that monthly maintenance is is outside of, you know, your regular mortgage and insurance payment. So it's going to be a little bit higher. Right. Uh, what what would you say in terms of pitfalls of buying Whenever or owning I, a condo? Yeah, good question. Whenever I have a buyer that's looking to purchase a condo, I always recommend any association that you're looking to buy in, you need to read the bylaws and review the financials. And I would say any money spent with you know, having a, a real estate attorney review those before you purchase is money well spent. Mm-hmm. Because they're going to tell you if the association is managed well or not. Okay, and that's something that a real estate attorney is obviously going to be good at. But you're not super well versed in that kind of. No, stuff. I'm not an attorney. I'm not. I don't. I don't well, can't advertise no, 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 myself sure. as that. But yeah, yeah, I would always recommend getting a double or a second set of eyes on okay. that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, and that can be, you know, those things can be pages and pages and pages. Yeah. All sorts of stuff. So you need to really know what you're looking for mm-hmm. if you're going to try to read through that and understand it. Mm-hmm. Um, and some of them will do it for free too if you close with them. So okay, it's, it's not a bad deal. Okay, I mean, and I assume <clears throat> a lot of those things are written in a very similar fashion. So somebody that knows and does this all the time can probably right, do yeah. it pretty easily. Yep. Versus somebody like us that uh, is trying to read this legalese and has no idea. I mean, yeah, I can do it. I just don't want the liability. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's that too. Yeah. Yep. Uh, um, I guess. Uh, what other questions do you have about condos? I mean, I'm trying to think in my in my mind. Like, what are the do people are, are what's what's mostly the most prevalent sort of type of condo that's around here? Are they one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedrooms? What do people look for? I mean, if they're empty Anything nesters, under do they three need? Bedroom. Yeah. Anything from one to two to three bedrooms. Okay. You don't see many for, I think most common is probably a two bedroom. Okay. I mean, I guess once you get up to three or four, you almost really ought to just look at rent yeah, a townhouse or yeah. something, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because I mean, so so in, in my mind, if I was thinking, well, should I rent a condo? The question would be condo versus townhouse, 
or not rent a condo, buy a condo. Mm -hmm. But the question will be condo versus townhouse because in a lot of townhouse HOAs, the HOA takes care of the exterior maintenance and the roof and stuff because it's shared, right, versus a single family home where you own the roof. Um, So the assessments for townhouses are more, but they take care of more of the exterior portion of the building. Yeah, this is a good distinction to make. So condo, you own the drywall in, but not the actual building. Townhome, you own the building and the land, but you're going to pay townhome fees to cover the the roof replacement, landscaping, exterior maintenance. With the townhome, you're still not going to do maintenance outside, and you do own your plot of land. Mm Mm-hmm. There's just more uh, mandatory maintenance that that comes with that, similar to a condo. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I guess one of the other things that I I would think in terms of townhouse versus condo is, um, you know, obviously neighborhood, right? Like a lot of condos are in higher density neighborhoods like that one in Lake Eola that we looked at uh, or Kissimmee and townhomes, you can sort of get more space. Right. And then a lot of... The trend for a lot of new build neighborhoods, especially where you're at, is single fam. One section is single family, yeah. and the other part of the neighborhood is townhomes. Yes. So you get like a mix of price points and also like accessibility. Right, and that's uh, yeah. My my development is absolutely some of each. I know Eric's is some of each right. too. Um, so yeah, there's there's kind of the the uh, the combination there to appeal to a wider wider audience, I guess. Mm-hmm. Obviously, if you get up to the price point of like a gated community there's not going to be townhomes in a gated community sometimes yeah 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 sometimes it just depends on you know what you can afford and and okay. and the zip code really uh, interesting interesting um wh- what would you say in terms of uh like amenities of a townhome because like in in my hoa we have a pool we have a clubhouse we have a fitness center um, you know, we have playgrounds for the kids and stuff like that. What what do you see mostly uh, in, in condos in, in terms of amenities? Like, do all of them have a pool and, and that kind of I'd thing? I'd say most of them have a pool, depending on when they were built. A lot of older ones don't, but more modern ones will have that. And probably, like, a, some even have a market. Some have a gym or fitness center, lap pools. Okay. A lo- yeah, a lot of different options there. D- yeah, depending on age, probably right. more than anything else. Right. Um, and and so, if I were looking, uh, if I were looking to buy a townhouse or a, sorry, a condo, if I were looking to buy a condo close to Disney World, um, you think one ninety two is is where the bulk of the yeah availability is? yeah bulk availability would be on one ninety two. I know that there's one. On in Windermere, actually. I think it's one of the only condos I can think of off the top of my head, um, right by the Publix near um, Village. We were just talking about it in the last episode. Oh, that's where the, the Publix is. Uh, There's one right across the street yeah. from there, and um, that's been popular with a lot of my buyers. Um, Lakeside Village. Yep. Where's the... Where's the yep, so uh, where it says Amidship Lane. I forgot the name of that neighborhood, but that's a that's a popular condo. Oh, okay. As well. Yep. Okay. Yeah. You can see there's like a there's a pool. It looks like there's a fitness center, maybe yep. a tennis court, just from the aerial view. Yeah, that's. But, um, but yeah, they're everywhere. Condos are really everywhere here in Central Florida. I can't so, think of one part of town that doesn't have a condo in them. So one one question that I had, um, what what what's the difference between a condo and an apartment? Other than obviously you don't own an apartment, but you own a. Condo. It really is ownership, yeah. So it's like a apartment that you own. So that's kind of what to think about in terms of, yep. uh, in terms of ownership. So you could, just like you could rent a townhouse from the owner, you could rent a condo from the owner yep. too. Yep, that's really popular. I have a couple friends that are <laughs> that are doing that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, do they? Are there a lot of rules and regulations? You know, around because certainly in in a lot of neighborhoods and, and HOAs, uh, especially in this area, they try to restrict your ability to like rent out your house as an Airbnb or something versus yeah. renting to a long term tenant with right. a lease. Um, is there a lot of restrictions on things like Airbnbs in uh, 
in condos? That's going to be um, a decision made by each association. So each association, each condo is going to be different, just, okay. just depending on the rules that they've set. So if that's place. something you're thinking about, it's uh, you got to look into. Yeah, the bylaws. you need to know the minimum the minimum rental um, time. Okay, mm-hmm. that's good to know. Yeah, because um, I think I mean I think there are a lot of people that are looking to buy condos, and like you said, if you're going to be here, if you're snowbird and going to be here six months of the year, then obviously you're going to want to rent for the other six months, and. Whether you rent to a tenant who's going to a single tenant who's going to stay six months, or you put it as an Airbnb, um, yeah, you're not going to want to have a long term tenant if you're using it as a vacation home because right. they're going to be in your house. <laughs> so right. you you would yeah. want to use it as an Airbnb or short term rental. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, all right. I don't. I don't think I I have any more questions. But um, you know, some of our viewers are obviously thinking about. Buying into a condo, uh, yeah. so we wanted to talk about it on this show. Um, I learned some things today that I didn't know before. Uh, so thank you, Eric. Yeah, and thank you for our viewers that you know gave us feedback and said they wanted a video on condo. Here you go. Yeah. So uh, stay tuned. Next week, I think we'll probably talk about either Doctor Phillips or Kissimmee. Uh, they're the sort of next two neighborhoods that we're gonna that we're gonna look at. Um, and, uh, yeah, any other ideas, please email me, jason at www.nt.com. If you have questions about buying or you're thinking about moving to Orlando, uh, Eric Gross at Magical Moves uh, Realty Group, eric at magicalmoves.com, super simple email address. Yep, or you can reach out on my website at magicalmoves.com. So there you go. Um, and we'll be back next week. Uh, in the meantime, if you're looking for a fancy shirt <laughs> like this one, uh, this is a Park Candy shirt. Um, if you go to parkcandy.wwnt.link slash parkcandy, um, that'll take you to the Park Candy website, and you can use code WDWNT to get 15% off your purchase of all the Park Candy merchandise that they have there. Um, these shirts are really nice. Uh, I wear them. I wear them on every show now. Um, they're 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 very comparable to those those other shirts that people buy that are named after old presidents that don't have any vowels in their name. Uh, if you know what I'm talking about, uh, but th- these are much cheaper. So uh, we like the Park Candy ones, and uh, we actually I actually we had a meeting with the Park Candy folks. Uh, last week and they're very nice so I think we're going to do a bit more work with Park Candy in the future Uh, but in the meantime you can use the code WWNT at their website to save 15% on your purchase and get cool shirts like this one with the Tiki Birds on it Uh, thanks for tuning in today Uh, thank you Eric for joining us once again thanks for having me and uh, we will see you all next week